Hey guys, you guys hear me? Give me a wave if you hear me. Oh, I see a wave. Okay, good. The room is filling. You guys, this is hi. Hi, Angie. Hi, everyone who's saying hi. This is, this is, uh, you know, my kids are obsessed with Hamilton. They talk about the room where it happens. Tonight, you have just entered the room where it happens. This is the room where it happens. Hi, Joe. Hi, everyone. Hi, the Eldora and M words. So funny. I can't see your actual names. All I can see are your username. So I'll just say hi, everyone. I hope you guys are doing great. Um, give me a, we start a lot of our meetings out like this. Give me a one word check in how you're feeling right now. Um, just type it into the chat. And for those of you who are new to us, welcome. This is a beautiful, warm, fun, inspiring community. And I couldn't be gladder to have you here. Um, do you guys want to, we haven't had the charming Andy. Come on, he's looking at me. He's, do you guys want to see Andy? Come on, come <laughs> Okay, this is my husband. Say hi. <laughs> hi, everyone. I am actually here. This is Andy. He is not a figment of the imagination. And I'll have to tell you guys, um, this man made me a grapefruit drink for this IG Live. Kudos to Andy. She'll be better Laura! for it. She'll be better for it. I'll be better for it. Right. My husband knows me well. So, so oh, great. Yep. So I saw a couple of people. Oh, someone said you were handsome. Oh, my. <laughs> um, he's blushing. Frustrated. I'm seeing a lot of frustrated. Are you guys this frustrated right now? Because it's day 257 of this damn quarantine. I hear you loud and clear, which is why I wanted to talk tonight about how to get to your happy. I know it's hard. Um, I have a practice that I've adapted, I've always had, that kind of keeps me in a good place. And it's, and it's been, you know, it's been challenging at times, you know, for me. And, you know, I welcome you guys to tell me about your frustrations. I have a 12 year old, I have a 16 year old, and suddenly we're, you know, doing homeschooling and lots of things. And I think teachers should make $2 million a day. Um, based on what we're having to do here. So I hear the frustration. I hear people saying that they feel blessed, bored, and lonely. Some people are saying optimistic. Um, so it looks like we've got a whole swath of emotions of emotions going on here. Um, has anybody had, yes, you're a teacher, good. I'm so glad. Everybody, hearts to you for being a teacher, hearts to anybody on the front lines fighting COVID, nurses, nurse practitioners, physicians, EMT, paramedics, if I've forgotten you, grocery store, anybody who is out there helping us to survive right now, cheers to you, my love for you, big hearts. Um, big thumbs up um, to all of you. So um, does anybody have any good news that they want to share in the comments? Like any sort of a win, small win, big win, something good that's happened because, uh, you know, we all need, we'll all give you a heart if you share your good news and your little wins. Um, could be as little as, you know, the chair I wanted went on sale and I got it for 40% off to I got a promotion at work or I didn't let get let go at work when everybody else was furloughed. You showered, someone showered. That is a big deal. So I'm really glad. Hi Beth. I'm glad that um, that is a total win to shower. Um, somebody's PPP loan got approved. Hallelujah. Um, this is about the CARES Act and for small businesses. I applied for a PPP loan as well. So this is so that we can all stay in business because um, business is rough for everybody at this point for small businesses. So support small businesses. Um, so Erica, you left a not great relationship. Love to you. Bath, beer, and Bella Thursday night tradition. That is a freaking hashtag. I want to make a t-shirt, bath, beer, and Bella. And the grapefruit drink that Andy just made for me. So someone had a 
your daughter's neighbors off a ventilator after two weeks and out of a coma. Oh, I'm so glad. Had a phone conversation with online connection. Someone had two video dates. Somebody had their unemployment check and extra from the governor. Go ticker. Yay, California. Um, got food before snow. Small win. Small wins are everything, guys. And thinking about the good things and the wins sometimes, you know, they can get flooded in our mind by the darker thoughts. So um, I'm so glad. Everybody's got so many people have so many good things to say about your small wins. Oh, I love that. Keep sharing them. So um, Bruce, you got out of work in time to make it here tonight. Bruce, you're here. I'm so excited to see all of you guys. Um, this is like my favorite thing to do. And I came off of an Instagram Live last night. I think um, people were on it. Just some quick news updates on my part as well. We, um, I did an IG Live with Matt, with Match.com. Now they're called Match, not Match.com. And they launched a new feature in app only called Vibe Check. So it's video. So instead of now talking to somebody on Match and then having to set up a FaceTime date, you can actually um, do what's called Vibe Check and just start video chatting with someone. So we talked a lot about the video dates, like how to look good in video, how you should do it, how long, what kinds of questions to ask. So um, have you guys been on video dates yet? If you have, put a put a thumbs up in, in the comments. So, oh, look at this. Somebody, you started exercising, lost a few pounds, met and unmet a younger guy. Okay, I'll take that. It's great to start exercising and lose a few pounds. This is such a good time here to, you know, get back to eating whole foods and healthy foods. Wow, I'm seeing people, Laura, good for you. I'm seeing thumbs up on FaceTime dates, you guys. This is great. So keep doing them. And this, I don't know when this shelter at home is gonna end um, for us. I know our president said today that the governors have jurisdiction over this and that people are gonna start going back to business. But what I will tell you guys this, and you're hearing it first here, is I hope the video dates are here to stay. I hope Match Match is gonna keep vibe check. And I hope that all of you keep this in tow. Ideally, the video date is just a precursor to meeting somebody in real life, but message back and forth on the apps, have a quick phone chat, like, hey, like make sure the person sounds like what you think they do. Sometimes people's cyber personalities and their real personalities don't match. The person sounds good on the phone. Do a quick vibe chat. Do a quick, do a quick video chat with this person. 20, 30 minutes, like easy peasy, right? And then it, when our worlds go back to normal again, then you can agree to go out on a real physical date. So I love the video dates. I love, um, I love the stuff. I think it's gonna save you guys time, money, energy, disappointment. I think having this kind of face-to-face, -face, I think for those of you who have done it, you go from something that's two-dimensional, from a picture and 200 words and a profile, to three-dimensional, where you actually see what this person looks like and, and sounds like. I'm sure that you guys probably, after this many weeks of me doing IG Lives, have a much, much, much better sense of me than maybe before you started doing these lives because I'm 3D. You can watch me talking. You see what I look like. You can kind of get a sense of my sense of humor. So, um, so I love this. Sh um, Chantel, you love the video chat idea so much. It is low stakes. It is super low stakes. And you guys, you can do this if you haven't tried it yet and you're still a little bit fearful about doing it, just do it. It's so easy. And you can tell your date like, Hey, how about we do a happy hour thing and pour yourself tea or LaCroix or a grapefruit drink or a glass of wine, whatever it is, and just have a little activity to do with each other. It's the the first one is hard, but the second one is less hard. And the third one gets easier and easier and easier. So definitely start to do these. I think this is going to become a thing. So, um, so that's what I did last night. So if you guys are on match, make sure that you're not just doing it on desktop, get the app and then you can check out the vibe chat or the vibe check. I actually kind of like the name vibe check, right? Like you're checking someone's vibe. It's a great way to do it. So, um, okay, good. Some, I, I know a lot of you saw last night's chat, so I'm loving it. Oh my God, Lindsay's on the call. Everyone give Lindsay 
Lindsay Love. Lindsay is my partner in crime. Lots of hearts to Lindsay. She's there. Our clients have loved the video dates and are building meaningful connections. It's been a great excuse to get dressed up. And P.S. She loves the bee earrings. These are bees. I, I love the bees and Lindsay loved them. And now Lindsay also owns the bees. So yeah, match somebody um, happy. It's called the vibe check on match. So it's super easy. Oh, I'm so glad you guys. Tonight is all about hope. Tonight is about inspiration. And tonight is about happiness. Okay. And I had so many people telling me that they were frustrated and Ticker, who's on these IG lives a lot, Ticker and I actually met. Ticker, I'm going to call you out right now. Um, we've only met once many, many years ago on the set of the Steve Harvey show. And we were helping her, Steve and I, to get back into the dating world after her divorce and her two beautiful daughters were on stage as well. And we've just stayed in touch through social media. So before this, Ticker said, Bella, what we need tonight on the IG live is a pep talk, right? We need a pep talk. So I want you guys to know we're all in this together. Everybody is feeling the friction and the rub of this. It's like day, I mean, I say it's day 187, but it's like day 35 of this or whatever it is. It feels long and I don't know that there's gonna be a quick end in sight. So what I wanted to talk to you about is getting to your place of, from a dating perspective, getting back to, I'm gonna say the initials, P.O. What's P.O. for you guys? P.O. Yeah, Ticker's saying it was 2013 that we were on. Give Ticker some love. Hi, Ticker. So we are, um, so getting back to, you know, dating psychotic optimism, that was P.O. So P.O. is psychotic optimism. That's the new hashtag also. Um, really getting to the place of believing that love is out there for you. It's a when, it's not an if. Good, Jane, you knew exactly what PO was. So um, absolutely. Guys, remember, and I got a photograph from someone who was on the IG call last week. Do you remember when I told you guys, I want you to write, love is out there for me. It's a when, it's not an if. Write it on your mirror, write it in lipstick, put post-its up. I am not kidding you. 10 minutes after last Thursday's IG Live, this beautiful girl sends me a picture of her in her bathroom and she wrote in lipstick, love is out there, love is out there for me. It's a when, it's not an if. Look at me, I get a little teary when I see that. You guys do that. I want you to stay in that good place and hear the good voices because I know the boogeyman and the darkness can come out when you don't have somebody feeding you the inspiration and the op and the optimism put it on your mirror put it wherever it is you need to do love is out there for me it's a when not an if i want you to put a big smiley face on there i want you to write hearts on there i want you to lipstick on the freaking mirror and for bruce and the guys that are on there put some post-its up or heck get a red lipstick and put it on your mirror too it looks a little sexy right so um so i am super um i'm super excited to share a couple of things with you. So I want you guys to remember that psychotic optimism. And the question people ask me is, how do you become psychotic optimistic? Good, Bruce, I'm glad you're optimistic. Um, I, I want you to know the things, what I wanted to share with you guys tonight is um, some of the things that I do on a daily basis to keep me happy. And some of these may resonate with you. Again, this is my list. This is not the list of truth. This is not the list of gospel. By no means am I saying, if you do all of these things, you need to do what Bella does. Not at all. I just wanted to share things with you because sometimes if I feel like if, if I get one seed planted in me from something I listened to or that I read, then it was so worth having doing. So um, I'm going to read you. You guys know I'm nerdy and organized and I like to have notes. So um, I'm gonna tell you, I, I said that I was gonna give you five secrets, but as usual, I couldn't limit it to five. I went to nine um, because I'm me and there's lots of things as I started scribing them down that make me happy. And you guys in the comments also, I may not be able to read yours, put the things that also make you happy down. If you guys have your morning routines, put things down, share ideas with each other and talk about the things that you do on a daily basis that keep you happy. So I'll tell you what, number one, you know, I'm not, we're not able to physically see our clients on a daily basis, which is something that 
feeds me. I'm not able to see Lindsay on a daily basis, which feeds me, right? I'm at home in a new environment with my husband working from home, my kids being home. And so one of the things that has really absolutely helped me is what I call feeding my body, and that's feeding my body with movement and exercise. And I know that everybody talks about this, but you guys, I can literally plot a chart of the days that I don't work out and what my mood feels like versus the days that I do work out. And I'm talking about, it can be, you know, I'm trying to get my 10,000 steps. Um, I've got an elliptical machine. It is old. It's 15 years old. I'm, I was going to get rid of it last year. It's become a lifesaver to sweat. Um, taking a walk outside, I grab my daughter and we go for walks. But some sort of exercise, those beta endorphins are happiness for me. So every single day, I have worked out more consistently in the last 34 days than I have probably in the last five years. So um, for me, it's become a game changer. And I didn't realize how dramatically it affects my mood. If you guys aren't finding a way to work out, to dance, to walk, to move, to do something. Kathy, I see you saying that you took a five mile walk today and it worked wonders today, even though it was cold. Somebody, Narendra, you're having coffee early in the morning and then workouts on your Peloton. Totally, hi, Erlene. And Susan, you took a walk in Central Park. How amazing, jealous, jealous, I love Central Park. We have Lincoln Park, which is awesome too. Green smoothie and daily walks are saving my sanity. I'm telling you guys, if there's anyone out there that needs inspiration, to move, I am telling you, I can literally plot my curve on the days I move and the days I don't move. Move every single day, feed your body. That's number one, feed your body with exercise. Um, number two is feeding my mind, right? With so much time and availability and things like Tiger King and things out there that can just mesmerize you and suck you in. What's really helped me to, I'm a growth oriented person and I'm happy when I'm learning. So feeding my mind with 30 to 60 minutes of something that helps me learn something new every day is, has been game changer. And I'm a busy, you know, dating coach, business owner, mom, wife, daughter, friend, sister, lots of things. And what's really helped me, and I don't know if you guys subscribe to this, is Audible. I know it costs a little bit of money on Amazon, but I take my headphones and suddenly all this time that was not quote unquote productive where I could sit down and read a book, I'm listening to audio books. I'm listening to podcasts that are blowing my mind and things that are inspiring me. And sometimes when you get in that dark place and you think, oh, I can't do this. When you hear someone else say to you, you can do this. It's you, This is all in your mind. Master your mind. It's amazing. So feeding your mind every single day with something inspirational. Maybe that's reading your religious books. Maybe that's listening to religious or spiritual talks. I see people talking here about TED Talks and educational podcasts. Somebody's learning about investments. I love that. Um, I've been learning a lot. Um, I've been trying to figure out how to build an online course online and doing a lot of learning about that and also learning about mindset. I, I read a lot. I've gotten super, I've gotten old school. I've gone back. I've listened to some really good Jack Canfield. Remember Jack Canfield, Chicken Soup for the Soul? He's like a multi-gajillionaire now and so lovely. And he has some videos. And I feel like when I listen to Jack Canfield's voice, if you haven't heard him, you know, he's this lovely older gentleman and you hear his voice and he, you know, and he tells you, he's like, here's how you're going to be successful. And here's why you're in charge of your mind. So I've been listening to Jack Canfield. I watched the Tony Robbins documentary. I'm not your guru, which if you guys have not seen it, it's actually on Netflix's list of most inspiring documentaries to watch 
It's amazing. I've been listening to Rachel Hollis. I see somebody's talking about Carol Dwick growth mindset. Okay, that's hilarious. Sending funny videos to friends. Okay, I love all of these things. But for me, feeding my mind with new things that I can write down at the end of the day and saying that I learned this today has been a really, really good thing that's keeping me happy and making me feel like I'm using this time um, usefully. Um, and... Number three, this kind of goes along with that, and I'm a little crazy, um, but I like to do something every day that scares me. And I'm not talking about like jump out of a plane scares me or like eat a spider scares me, but something that like I've been anxious about and maybe I'm afraid of rejection and maybe I'm afraid, well, if I email that person, they won't email me back every single day doing something that pushes me out of my comfort zone um, like I'm saying to, I'll tell you guys what I'm trying to put together. Like we have so much knowledge between, you know, at smart dating Academy, we've been doing this for 10 years and we do a lot of one-on-one -on -one in or like coaching for our clients. But what we want to do is develop a digital course. And what I did is I pushed the button. I've been doing a lot of research and I bought an online course about how to write a course. I'm like, there's one person that's going to do this and it's going to, and it's going to be me. And I'm excited about it. And it was a lot of money and I was afraid to do it. But you guys, when I pushed purchase, I'm telling you, I felt like I felt like a million bucks because I did something that I was afraid of. I did something that would help me to help other people, to help you guys. So do something that you're afraid of every day. Challenge yourself. You know, maybe today you went on a three mile walk and that's been great. Maybe you can jog, you know, two minutes of that run tomorrow. Something that you're afraid of. If you're not a runner, you think my knees have been bothering me. So, um, so, um, so try something like that. Oh, Jenny, I'm so glad that you love the idea of an online course. It scares me to do it. Truthfully, this is what I'm good at talking to people. So to put things in the structure, um, you do that for a living and you can totally do it. Oh, I love you guys. Thank you so much. So I'm doing the thing that scares me. So next week I want you guys to, we're going to have a little homework for you guys. And you're going to tell us what you're doing. That's scaring you. That's feeding your mind or feeding your body that, um, has made you feel good. So, um, and here's point number four. And a lot of people that are um, talk about happiness and mindset will tell you this, and I will tell you no different. You are the average of the five people that you spend the most time with, right? And I know a lot of you live alone, right? But if you think about the people that you're spending the most time with, are these relationships serving you? Are they helping you to grow? Are they bringing you up? Are the people that are in your life elevating you, right? And if not, find, find, add new people to your tribe. I don't want to say get rid of people from your tribe. That's not what I'm trying to say, but really be cognizant. Who are the five people that you spend the most time with? The people that you talk to? to most, right? Those are the five people that will shape your mindset, that will shape your outlook, that will shape your thoughts, that will shape your attitude. And if you find that you're around people that are bringing you down, right? It's time to change those five people. Taking, take real stock of these people in your life. Right now I say I most people I spend my time with are my husband, my two kids and two people in my family, right? And so you want to really make sure that these people are serving you well. And maybe, you know, you live with toddlers or you have kids at home, but really think about building this tribe of five different people. Um I love this. And I love that people are saying that People are elevating you. The people in your life elevate you. The five people, I love that. You're surrounded by the best of the best, Sharon. You're so blessed. Well, that's great. For those of you who aren't, really start to think about that. And maybe it's time to change up those five people a little bit. Um, and this is really nice. You know, it's the old adage of giving versus receiving. Um, and I'm not saying that you have to give a million dollars or even a thousand dollars. But right now, every day, do something that is generous. Maybe it's a text to somebody about how they helped you, about how you're grateful for them being in your top five average of, like, of people that are bringing you up and that you're so blessed about 
the fact that they're in your life. Be generous with your kind words to people. Human beings, we crave affirmation and we crave to know that we're seen. Um, oh, I'm your once a week fellas. Oh, thank you. Uplifting. I love this. You guys are so amazing. And this is such a great and positive community. But do give those words of affirmation to people, right? I'm no different than anybody else. Everybody loves getting those texts of love. Um, you know, or you can donate right now. There are so many all in challenges donating to hospitals. My sister in law started this project, um, selling masks for doctors and nurses because two of her sisters are doctors and they didn't have enough masks just to protect themselves on a daily basis. So she figured it out and feels so good about the purpose that she's created about making these masks. So find a way in your own way to be generous. I've seen amazing things on social media where people live in apartment buildings and they've posted notes in the lobby saying, hi, my name is Bella and I go to the grocery store on Mondays and Thursdays. If I can help you with any groceries, if you're not able to leave your house, please let me know. I'm in apartment 802. How amazing is that? People making more food than they need and delivering, you know, like dropping food off at neighbors, being, um, being generous with yourself. Maybe it's your time. Maybe it's your money. You guys, I'm seeing your comments of affirmation. I'm super touched. Thank you. You're getting your generosity and your giving. When you give to people, when you give love, when you give affirmation, when you give your money, when you give things, right? If somebody's saying, I help those around me get the hot items like Lysol sanitizers and toilet paper. You, somebody, Susan, you make lunch for the doorman. It's all amazing. You guys, these are things that make you, and does doesn't it make you feel good when you give, right? When you make someone smile, it's better than getting the gift. Giving the gift is, and getting the gift is always nice, but giving the gift is even nicer. I see Lindsay saying, my kids are sending handwritten notes to neighbors across the street and playing Battleship over Zoom. So nice, I love this. So, um, so that was number five. Um, number six is a book and I, it's up in my office. I meant to tell it to you guys. One of my closest friends, um, her name is Anna, and she gave me a book last year. In fact, Anna just had a baby today at Northwestern Hospital, but she gave me a book called 52 Lists for, uh, for Happiness, and we did the book together, and it's looking at, and every week we did a list together, and it talked about routines. What are our routines, and what are the things that make us happy? What are the, you know, what are the best experiences in our lives that have made us happy? Happy. And what it really does is it puts you in this mindset of really analyzing yourself, your life for the things that make you happy. And there's a section of the book about the things that you don't like that make you unhappy. So 52 lists for happiness was such a game changer for me, um, both with purpose at work, purpose with my family, my friends. It, it's You want to be with people that really lift you up and elevate you. So that's a great book. I see you guys talking talking about all these ways that you're giving to people in the comments. I'm gonna take a sip of my grapefruit drink and cheers to you guys. I'm so proud um, to be part of this community with such generous people and giving people. Okay, I've got three more that I wanna share with you. And then I have oodles of questions that you guys have asked. You guys are absolutely the best. Um, oh, Sharon, you read The Happiness Project. That's a good book too. I'm so happy. Cheers to you too, Joe. Um, so gratitude, you guys, It people talk about it all the time. One of the questions that we ask our clients in our questionnaires when they first start up with us in our, in our package thing um, is, do you keep a gratitude list? One of the scientifically proven, psychologically proven, neuroscientifically proven ways to be happy is to think about the things that you're grateful for every single day and write them down. It is not enough to think about them in your mind. And I'm going to give you a challenge. I want you to write down for the next seven days until we do the next IG Live, 10 things every day that you are grateful for right? Sometimes it's going to be the same things. Sometimes it's going to be different things, but what 
gratitude does is it sets up accountability with yourself for looking what is good in your life. When you are forced to write down 10 things that you are happy about, you know what you're going to do? You're going to look for 10 things to be happy about. I've made my children do this since fourth grade. They keep gratitude lists, right? And then they have, they know that they have to look for things. So you know what it does is it puts your brain, which is normally wired for a negativity bias. And that's to keep us safe and in order and to keep us survival. We're always looking for what's wrong. So how we don't get hurt or screwed in a situation here, I'm telling you, you're going to look for 10 good things in your day and write them down for the next seven days. That means you're going to have 70 things on your gratitude list by the time that we do this next Thursday. Can you believe that? 70 different things, okay? Gratitude will start to change your mind. It will change your life. And don't think you can get away with not writing it down, okay, you guys? I'm going to challenge. I'm going to show you guys my gratitude list, okay? I'll show you mine if you show me yours. Send me your pictures this week of your gratitude list. I will hold you accountable. And you guys know if you DM me, I will message you back. Send me your lipstick on the mirror pictures. Send me your gratitude list. Send me how you fed your body. Send me how you fed your minds. And I will give you a heart and love because I want you guys to be happy and get through this time. Um, and here's, here's one that starts out bad but turns out good. And I call it stop telling yourself the bad story right? So often we all have stories that we tell ourselves. This person, I'm not that important to this person. This person doesn't like me. They don't value me. I'm not good enough. I'm not smart enough. And whatever those bad stories are, we tend to project those stories onto other people. So for example, um, this happened to me at work before I started Smart Dating Academy. So someone that I work with would always say, good morning, hi, how are you? Every single day. And it was the general manager of one of our business units. And the day before I had given a presentation. And so the next day, and you know, you're always like, okay, well, how was the presentation? I don't know, was it good? And I was second guessing myself, of course, which I do brilliantly. And the next day, this person walked past me and didn't say good morning. And immediately, where do you think I went? I went to that place, that dark place in my mind. I'm like, oh my God, my presentation sucked. He couldn't even look at me. He always says good morning. He must have hated it so much that he just, he couldn't even say hi to me. And I stewed about this all day and the story got bigger and it affected my mood and my colleagues could sense they're like are you okay are you okay and I finally went into his office and I said can I talk to you about the presentation that I did yesterday I know it was awful and he said I was just going to come in to tell you that it was amazing and I said but it what really I thought you hated it he's like why would you think that I said well this morning when you walked in right past me, you didn't even look at me and, and you didn't say hi. And, and I automatically thought that it was because you hated the presentation and you were mad with the work that I did. He's like, oh my God. He said, my wife and I got into a huge fight this morning and it was replaying and I had hung up the phone 10 seconds before I walked in to the building. And honestly, Belle, I didn't even see you walk by. What did I do? All day long, I stewed in the bad story. Don't tell yourself the bad story. T ask yourself, what is the truth about what's the fact behind what just happened? And in my story, it would be, the fact is, Harold walked right past me and he didn't say hello. That was the fact, okay? That's the fact that happened. Now, what did dear Bella do? Bella put all her stuff on the fact, right? All this mis not true stuff. Instead, he just, and the truth of the matter was, he didn't even see me. He was so in his own head. And all day long, I thought my presentation was awful and I was going to get fired. And you guys, and, and I know I see a lot of you going, I'm glad I'm not the one who does this. 
I, this is the thing. We all tell ourselves stories all the time. Stop telling yourself the bad story. My husband and Andy and I do this. You know, when we'll get into something, like sometimes he he gets these really intense looks on his face and I think he's angry. And we've been married for a long time and I still get into this loop that when I see his face look like that, I'm like, oh my God, what did I do wrong? And just recently, we've had this discussion and I said, you know, when you have that look on your face, I think you're mad at me. And he looked at me, he goes, what look on your face? And so I brought him to the mirror and I showed him the look on your face. I said, every time I see that look on your face, it puts me into freeze mode. Like you're angry at me, like I've done something wrong. And he says, oh my gosh, he says, I don't even know what you're talking about. So I became vulnerable, told him this, we connected on this. And now when I see the look on his face, I immediately start, I say, okay, I see that look on your face and the story I'm telling myself is you didn't like when I blah, blah, blah. And he just starts laughing. He's like, it's the story. There's no look. Saying to yourself, the story I'm telling myself, right? It's yes, he has RBF, resting bitch face, 100%. And he would totally agree. As nice and lovely as he is, he has this look. So stop telling yourself the bad story. And you guys, this could be about dates. This could be about somebody not texting you back, emailing you back, somebody ghosting you. Stop telling yourself the bad story. The story is they didn't call you back. And it doesn't mean one damn bad thing about you. It just means they didn't call you back. Maybe they're busy. Busy, maybe they've moved on, whatever it is, right? Just don't tell yourself the bad story that's going to put you in that bad place of anxiety. And I hear you, Wendy. It's easy to do this when you don't hear right back from online dating. What I want you to do, Wendy, and all of you right now is when you send those messages, that's it. You're done. You are not going to tell yourself the bad story anymore, right? You're going to say when they're ready, if they're ready, they're going to email me back. And if they don't, it's okay because I'm going to message more people, right? The person that you're going to be with, remember, love will come to you. It's a when, not an if. That person is going to like you a little bit more than you like them. Remember all my rules, right? That is that is key. And this person will text you back and will email you back. So just because this person doesn't, don't go to that deep, dark place and tell yourself that story because I'm going to tell you that's wrong. L Elvis, you write that on your mirror and you send me the photo and I'm going to put you in my stories. Okay. I will. Yes. Tell, stop telling yourself the bad stories, you guys. And I want you to put on your gratitude list. When you stop telling yourself the bad story, I am grateful that today I stopped telling myself the bad story. You can blend these tips all into one and watch your mindset start to shift, okay? It will be really powerful. Okay, Leah, nice to meet you. Um, and the last one, you guys, I ended with my tips with staying psychotically optimistic. Doing these eight things, and I'll repeat them for you. Feeding your body with daily movement. Feeding your mind with 30 to 60 minutes of something that allows you to feel inspired, positive, grows you intellectually or emotionally, okay? Number three, do something that pushes you out of your comfort zone every single day. Number four, remember, you're the average of the five people that you spend the most time with. If you have great people, I want you to be generous. Tell them that you were on an IG Live and you wanted to tell them that you're the average of five people and you've got the best five people in your life. Tell them that, right? Or change up your tribe if you don't like your five people, okay? Then generous, be giving, give that word of affirmation, send that text of love, write that nice comment. Help your neighbor, send the notes, buy the groceries, make the masks, donate the money. There are so many people that need right now give and it will put you in your happy place. Um, the book, and somebody asked me about the book before, it's, buy, it's um, the 52 lists for happiness. Um, if you guys want, shoot me a DM if you need the title and I'll send you a picture of the book. It's a great book. Number seven, gratitude. People, remember I'm giving you homework. 10 gratitudes, 10 things a day, 70 of them by next week, okay? I want you to start to rewire your brain away from that negativity bias into a positivity bias, right? And people will start to palpably notice how much happier and how much more positive you seem because you are looking for what is good. You are being generous with the kind word. And you know what this stuff does? It makes you more attractive. It makes you more likable. So when you get on 
when you get on these FaceTime dates, it's going to put you in your happy place. And people that are attractive, it's because it's not necessarily how you look or what your body looks like. Are you positive? Are you confident? Are you happy? Right? These are the things and these things will make you happy and stop telling yourself the bad story. You guys, I am the queen of telling myself the bad story. Believe it or not, I could regale you on an eight hour IG live of the bad stories that I tell myself and how I how I am trying to get better at this. We're all works in progress. And number nine, staying psychotically optimistic always, okay? I love this. Somebody EM words. Just got a journal to write out the 70 things. Cheers to you for doing that. Mm. Dry throat. Oh my gosh, you guys. You guys just take my breath away. Okay, gonna show you all the questions that you guys have sent in the last day. I love this. And you guys, I'm going to apologize in advance if I don't get to your question because you know Instagram throws us off right at the hour mark. Keep sending them to me. Send me a note that says, Belle, you didn't get to my question last week and I will put you on top of the pile, okay? So um, let's see. Let's see. Um, I am, okay, question number one. I'm planning on setting up an online profile. Woo -woo! As I've been browsing the site in free mode, I noticed many of the profiles that state something like looking for someone between ages X and Y. Most of the profiles I'm attracted to are looking for younger women. I'll be 65 this year. Is it a waste of time to reach out to those types of profiles? If no, what are some ways to deal with this? So once you set up your profile and you see that somebody's looking for someone younger, you know what? You can shoot them an email. Don't get too invested in that. Don't get angry that this guy is looking for someone younger, right? Just move on to someone that's looking for you and you can send the message. And again, don't tell yourself the bad story at all, okay? Just send the email and, and do it, right? And then if the person isn't looking for you, who cares? Move on to the next one. So don't worry about the people who aren't looking for you. Look for the people that are looking for you because there are lots and lots of them out there. Um, next question. Any tips for what to include in a profile and how long it should be? Um, it depends on the site or the app that you're on. I don't know who this question came from and what the and what the app or site is but you know an app like bumble is like 200 characters which is basically like a tweet and a half it's like a sentence but then on match you can go free form and write thousands of characters so um a couple of easy tips be positive um be positive in your profile don't talk about what you're not looking for um don't talk about um anything negative. Please do not contact me if. Be really positive in your profile and talk about the things you are looking for and talk about the things that are special about you, things that you bring to the table, right? When you, I can make you a killer grapefruit cocktail. Whatever those things are about you, write little memorable things that make you stand out that, and it give people things to start conversations about, right? That's how you should start. That's how you should write your profile. Really think about what makes you, you, and the little things that you like to do. Maybe you cook, you, you know, maybe you are an amazing hopscotch player. You won a hula hoop contest. You are an amazing speller, whatever it is. Just write that in your profile. Fun little tidbits about you. Someone once said, I iron my underwear. I'm like, that's kind of hilarious. And they saw that in someone's profile. So if that's something that's important to you, that certainly differentiates you from the pack. So um, definitely um, show, don't tell. That's my best tip around that. Show us how, um, who you are in your profile. Give us something to start a conversation about. Don't be generic. Um, next one. I have found that on these online sites, when I make a connection and we exchange hellos, I will then usually ask something about the guy, but then they go silent. He says nothing about me. Is he just not interested? So the conversation ends there. What can I do about that? Look, if you are messaging with someone and showing them interest and trying to engage them and they're not engaging you back, drop it, right? Don't worry. I want someone to like you a little bit more then you like them and they should be super engaged. They shouldn't give you one word answers. Like, did you have a good weekend? Yes. 
That's unacceptable. They should say, yes, this is what I did. How was your weekend? This is a conversation. It's like a tennis match. You got to hit the ball back and forth. And if somebody's just saying yes and letting the ball drop, move on. Don't worry about those people. Um, next, uh, next question. Is it a bad idea to kiss on the first meeting? It hasn't worked for me to get a second date. Um, I wonder if the guy then assumes I am cheap. I'm not exactly sure. Is it a bad idea to kiss on the first meeting? It hasn't worked for me to get a second date. I wonder if the guy then assumes I am cheap. I'm not sure what the linkage is in that question, um, but let's put it this way. Let's go back to the, is it bad to kiss on a first date idea? Um, no, it's not bad. If you're into it and the person's into it, it's totally fine to kiss on the first date. You know, um, Kissing is totally fine. You guys know I'm a fan of sex exclusivity and that has nothing to do with kissing. Um, you, there's a lot you can do until you get to the point where you're thinking about having sex and ideally that's in an exclusive relationship. But um, yeah, you can kiss on the first date and the second date and the third date. It's totally fine. If you're feeling it and the person's feeling it, just make sure that it stays at a point that you're comfortable, that it's nothing that you're gonna regret the next day or feel pushed beyond your boundaries to do something else. People need to respect where you are. And if you don't want to kiss on the first date, that is totally fine too. I always say start the date and end the date at least with the hug because then it shows you are a warm, interesting person, um, but nobody should push you to do anything that you don't want to do. Um, next question. Why do some men text and text but will not talk to me on the phone? Um, well, if somebody's just texting and texting and you're asking them to talk on the phone and they're not wanting to talk on the phone, then they want what I call as a textual relationship. We used to talk about sexual relationships, now it's textual relationships. So, um, so if the person doesn't wanna to talk to you on the phone, get rid of them. You're not in it, you're not looking for a pen pal, right? So if somebody doesn't wanna to talk to you, then they're certainly not gonna to wanna to go out on a date with you, so just move on, so. Mm. Dry throat and and a good grapefruit drink. Uh, next question. Oh, the next question is just like that. If a guy will only ne text and never talk on the phone, what does that mean? That means he doesn't like to talk on the phone um, and suggest the phone. I love the phone. Um, as Lindsay will tell you, our clients' worst dates are when they skip the phone. Always, always, always talk on the phone and now do a FaceTime date because you can definitely get a good sense of this person and think about how exciting it's going to be when you actually get to meet someone in person after COVID is over. Can you imagine? Um, this is a good question. How do you compete with all the other women's profiles? Men seem to have their pick of the lovely ladies. All right, y'all. I'm going to tell you this. We have a lot of grass is always greener going on right now. We work with a lot of men. We work with a lot of women. Men think that women wake up every single day to an inbox of hundreds of messages and all they have to do is show up and they get to pick who's best and they don't have to do any work. They just have to be themselves and it's wonderful and so easy to be a woman, right? Now, ladies, you know that that just is not the case and I want you to know that you were doing the same thing about men. When you think men have it easy, all men want women that are abhorrently younger than them. That is not true. Ladies have it difficult. Men have it difficult, right? And every person has their own situation. So dating can be tough for everybody. So just know, don't tell yourself that bad story. I saw some of you guys writing that and good on you. Don't tell yourself the bad story that it's just about you and that, you know, you're Okay, I'm sorry why I had an Instagram. Hold on, let me put that on silent. Okay, um, so I think that's, hey Andy, call your sister. Sorry, this is his cell phone that I'm doing the Instagram live on. Um, so let's see, 
So the grass is always greener. I lost my train of thought. Yeah, so don't tell yourself the bad story, okay? Just tell yourself, love is out there for me. And if that person wants someone that's younger, and if that person doesn't email me back, to hell with them, okay? Dating isn't easy. You're right, Dave. It's not easy for anybody, okay? So it, everybody's got their struggle. You've got your struggle. We've all got our struggles, okay? So don't... So don't tell yourself that bad story. Love is out there for you. It's a when, it's not an if. Write it on your mirrors, okay? Oh, I love you too, CarmGo15. Mm. Next question. Your opinion on using dating apps with a bad rep, i.e. Tinder. Tinder is responsible for tons of engagements, tons of marriages, probably more than any site out there right now. Okay, so there are hookup -y people on Tinder, there are hookup -y people on eHarmony, and Christian Singles, and Meet Mindful, and Millionaire Meet, and Elite Singles. The hookup -y people are everywhere, okay? They're on Instagram, they're on Snapchat. Look past that. If you wanna be on Tinder, it's probably got the biggest denominator of any dating app out there in the world. Look for good people. I have been to Tinder weddings, right? I've seen the Tinderellas. So use, remember, 15 to 30 days on a site or an app, okay? Have a strategy, see how it goes for you, and if it doesn't go well, move to another one. Or if it is going well and you want some more, add a second site or an app. But what is Smart Dating Academy? It says only two sites or apps at the same time. That is it, okay? No more, no less, one or two. Um, Here's, here's a question. Where to go on a first date that leaves a nice impression? Well, right now, go to a nice place in your house because we're only gonna be video dating for a little bit of time at this point. Um, but if you're wanting to go on a first date that makes a good first impression, my advice is ask the person what they'd like to do and say, hey, I was thinking of Thai or French or I was thinking we grab dessert. What's your favorite place? And let the person say what their favorite place is and it's totally fine to do that. And that's the way you can make a great impression on someone is be thoughtful and ask them where they would like to meet, what's convenient for them, if they have any food restrictions and they'll be impressed just by your thoughtfulness. Okay. Um, so question here is, I've been dating for almost three years. I can't find high quality men. I don't know what to do. Um, here's what I would tell you. Keep going. Dating is a marathon and it could be a three, four, five year marathon, not a sprint. Um, if you're not finding high quality men, um, I would like to dig into that one-on-one -on -one a little bit more. There are great people out there. It could be that your picker's broken and you're picking people that seem high quality, but they're actually wolves in sheep's clothing and they're low quality or you're missing red flags. So there's something in there that you should be meeting high quality people. Um, maybe they're not all for you, but there's something in the picker that's off. So um, I see that's me. <laughs> okay. So um, there's something, Leah, in the picker that might be off. You should be meeting high quality people. You know, we talk about high GHQ guys, high and good husband quality. That is the highest quality man you can find. And we help to transform checklists in our coaching session called the marriage map, which is amazing. And it really transforms your wants to your needs and what you need to be happy. And it is so most likely it's in your picking mechanism. So, um, so we can delve into that more one-on-one, -on -one, but there are high quality men out there and you most importantly are super high quality. And I know that love is going to be out there for you. Well, I'm giving you a big heart. If I could write a heart or figure out how to do it without ending this chat prematurely, I get so nervous about touching this thing and, and, and ending it. Um, so Let's see, um, do, 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 do. here's an interesting question. How do you get a good guy with a little relationship in, and intimacy experience to be a better kisser or a lover? Um, you become vulnerable with him 
and hopefully this is the kind of guy and it's how you deliver the message as well and say it's not saying you're not a good kisser you're not a great sexual partner but here's what I enjoy maybe we could try this and it's put taking the accountability on yourself he needs to be a better lover for you and tell him that there is nothing more than a good partner for you wants than to please you so have those conversations openly authentically from a place of love remember making sure that you don't have rbf resting bitch face like my husband when you're doing it make sure that you're smiling and and you talk about it and then you give specific feedback and you make the person feel like they're really important and that um you do love them and you are into them and you want your relationship to get to a better place right um Next question, how do you keep the spark alive during social distancing other than video or FaceTime calls? Um, keep the spark alive by doing activities together, right? Throw, instead of just sitting there on FaceTime, blah, 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 cook dinner together, right? Have a dinner challenge where both of you look in your pantry, take the same five items that you have, throw your phones up, and each of you have to make dinner at the same time, and you guys can see who's doing the most creative thing with the dinner, right? Or call each other, agree on it, Agree on your items, give yourself 30 minutes like a TV show, and then come back and look at what each other has made. These are just fun things that you can do um, to keep the spark alive. Go on Netflix party, watch a movie together where you can chat together, um, play games together. Um, I know people that are playing poker with people online. So it's it you can do fun things that keep the spark alive. Talk about like how great it's going to be when you can actually meet each other. What's your first date going to be like? Maybe you're getting back to dating this person post quarantine. What's the first thing you guys are going to do when you see each other? It's going to be and these are ways to keep that spark alive. Find good question and answer games, right? You can do those. Arthur Aaron has those questions that, you know, are guaranteed to make you fall in love with each other. Bruce, you're playing words with friends. I love that. So do things, do activities like that. And that will definitely keep the connection and keep it less boring, right? Um, let's see. There's a question here. It says balancing being not into someone and giving someone a real shot. So that means I think um, that you don't feel the chemistry right now, but you are trying to let the chemistry grow. That's awesome. As long as there's no red flags and this person seems like a good, solid person that is making you happy and you're enjoying your time together, then continue to see... It Continue to give it a chance to breathe, right? Instead of looking to screen people out, you guys, look to screen people in, okay? Screening people in is a total mindset shift on dating. It's giving chemistry a chance to grow and you're giving this person time for you to really get into them. And especially for women, it may take a little bit of time to let that physical spark set in, but give that emotional intimacy, that spiritual intimacy, that intellectual intimacy, time to let that spark happen and you're doing absolutely the right thing. Keep seeing the person as long as there's no red flags. Keep going and see if the chemistry can develop. But you know, after you've been on 10 or 12 dates and you're finding yourself less interested and you're like, God, the thought of kissing this person is making me nauseous, then you've probably given it enough time to let that person go. But absolutely every single love story that we have helped to author at Smart Dating Academy never starts with strong chemistry. It starts with that yeah, the person was nice. They're okay. I'm letting it grow. And the chemistry doesn't often happen until three dates, sometimes to 10 dates, 12 dates. You know, Andy and I were friends for six years before we actually had a spark and got together. So yes, that's a long story in and of itself, but that chemistry can develop long-term. Just give it a chance. And one day it just goes over the line and it happens. And then there's no turning back. So you never know, but let it simmer. Um, here's the next question. He has stopped texting and doesn't answer FaceTime, but still responds when I text him. It's not, uh, not a good sign. So he's not proactively texting. He's not taking your FaceTimes, but he will text you back. 
I think that means, I always say, look for changes in behavior. If somebody was FaceTiming you, if they were really proactive in the texting and now they're not, something has changed. Their feelings have changed. Don't hold on to it for too long. Don't tell yourself the bad story. Whatever, it's not gonna work out. Move on and find someone else, okay? Ooh, Instagram's giving me the two-minute warning. Um, let me see if... Doo -doo -doo. Um, there's a question here that somebody said, do people find relationships on Tinder? Or is it mainly a hookup app? I think I answered that question in detail. Tinder can be a great app, just like any app, as long as you use it well. And um, the next question is conversation on phone once you've chatted via a dating app. Yes, absolutely. Sharon, have the conversation on the phone. Have some good questions planned um, that you can talk about that are positive. And then once you've done the phone, then take it to the FaceTime dates um, and see where it goes. So you guys, I think I've gotten through a lot of the questions, I don't know, maybe I got through all the questions today, miraculously, and told you nine happy secrets instead of just five. You guys, this was uh, lit me up, so excited. I hope you liked the happy tips. If you want me to post them, I'm happy to do that. If you have any questions, you guys are the best. Thank you so much for being here. Should we do another one next Thursday? Um, I bath beer and Bella. That was like the best thing. Um, and I'm forgetting who wrote that. Janet, I think. Thank you. You guys post the tips. Okay, we'll do. We'll do. I love you guys. Thank you so much. Remember, get to your happy place. You have homework. Get your gratitude list done. Feed your body. Feed your minds. Stay in a good place. Don't tell yourself the bad story. Be generous. Send somebody a kind note, you guys. Oh, I should write a book. Thank you so much. Thanks for your words of affirmation. I love